All right, I'm just going to wait a few, uh, few seconds for the streaming to start so that the head will not chop off. OK, so first, we need to get a tire thread in order to create the tire thread for all, all our cars. So currently, all our cars right, doesn't, have any, doesn't have anything on it. OK, so if you go and look at the scenes, I'm going to pull out the car, the latest car that I did. Right, it's just a simple stand-in mesh like <clears throat> like this <clears throat> doesn't have any threads on it. So in, in order to make it to look nice, we need to find some images on the internet. Okay, just Google for tire thread pattern, and then just enter. And if you click on images, you should be able to find plenty of image patterns available for you to use. Okay. So take note that some of the images have some, um, what do you call it, watermark on it. Like, for example, this one. Try not to use this one unless okay, you can bring it into Photoshop and painstakingly remove all these uh, watermarks. All right. Try to find a tire pattern that has this uh, black and white. But even this one, this is the actually the tire pattern that I used for the example. It comes with a very faint watermark on it. So I'm going to use this image as an example. Okay, I'm going to save the image into my source images folder. Then I'm going to process it a little bit. And take note that this image originally is a JPEG. Now, JPEGs are generally not, um, not very suitable for textures. Okay, the reason is because JPEGs are compressed image formats. Okay, if they are compressed too much, if you zoom in closely and take a look at the, the edges of the JPEG image, you'll see that there are a lot of noise that is going on. Okay, so we need to process this a little bit because if we bring this straight into Maya and then use it as a bump map, it's going to generate a lot of noise. Okay, I'll demonstrate that quickly by going to this tire scene here. Uh, I'm just going to start a brand new scene and create a flat plane, flat polyplane. OK, so I'm going to just apply a material straight to this plane by right mouse clicking on it, assign a new material. OK, I'm going to assign a blend material to it. And then under the blend itself, under bump mapping, Okay, I'm going to click on bump map mapping, click on the checker box, and then click on file. And then you're going to go further ahead by clicking on this button here. Click on the folder and locate the tire texture. Okay, let me see what is the name of the tire texture. It's called um, 800px. So this is the one. So if I open this, okay, right now I don't see any bump, okay, because you need to press number six on your viewport in order to see the bump. And if you zoom in closely, you see that this is the problem of using a noisy or highly compressed JPEG. You will see all this bumpiness that's going on. So if you want to avoid this, we need to process this a little bit more. So I'm going to go to Photoshop. I'm going to show you how to process this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock this layer so I can edit it. Double click on it and then click OK to unlock it. First, you use your box selection to select the white areas and then just delete them away. Okay, I'm going to select all the white areas and delete them away. That will get rid of most of the watermarks that crosses over to this area here. Now, let's take a look at this area here. What about the black areas? OK, we want to make this gray area completely black. So I'm going to use a selection tool. Press Control D to, to deselect. And I'm going to use Select Color Range. 
Okay, what color range does is that when you go to color range, you can use the eyedropper tool to sample or pick the colors that you want to be selected. In this case, I want the blacks to be selected. And then I'm going to push the fuzziness all the way to 200 and then click OK. So everything beyond the 200 level, including the gray areas, will also be selected. The next thing I want to do is I want to fill all this selection with black, pure black. So edit, fill, and change it to black. So now it's completely black. I press Control D to deselect. And now we have a very good image that we can use. Okay, but take note, uh, if your image resolution is very small, which is this one, which is quite small, you will get this aliasing effect. So this aliasing effect will also turn up on your bum map. So if you want your bum map uh, features to look better, then you use a higher resolution. But for this example, I'm going to leave it as it is. Okay, so we fixed our images already. Uh, we gotten rid of most of the watermark. So the next thing I want to do is I want to fill the white areas. I want to fill the white areas with 50% gray, 50% gray. Why 50% gray? So wait, let, let me select the white areas first. So again, I'm going to use the select color range. And then I'm going to sample and pick only the white areas. And then again, at full 200% and click OK. So even the, uh, the blank areas will be selected. Or at least I think it is, or maybe it's not. Okay. Anyway, because I deleted the blank areas, so they are no no longer white. I'm gonna deselect again. I'm going to use the fill tool, like a paint bucket tool, and I'm gonna fill the area with white. Okay, the empty areas with white. And then I'm gonna use my select again. Select the color range, and pick up only the white areas. So now all of them is selected. So what I wanted to do is to fill it with 50% gray. 50% gray. And then control delete. So now we have a perfect or uh, pretty good bump map that we can use. So I'm going to save this image. Tire underscore tire threads underscore bump. I'm going to save it as a PNG. Click OK. So now I got this brand new map. I'll go back into Maya. And you notice the bump is still using the old image. I'm going to re I'm going to change the image to the tire bump map. Tire threads bump. Okay, then click open. And now you can see the bump is much cleaner. I don't have all the noise anymore. OK, there's some slight noises that I did not remove. But from a distance, it's actually look quite OK. Now, you guys know what are bump maps, right? You all learn about it inside your, in your intro to 3D. OK, remember, bump maps, right, does not do or does not change the physical part of the plane. If you look at the side of your plane, right, it's completely flat. The bump map, what the bump map does, it gives an illusion on, of unevenness. Okay, video games use this a lot. Okay, in order to create a feeling of roughness on the surface. So how do we get this texture onto, let's say, a cylindrical tire? So I'm going to show you how to model a very simple tire just using a cylinder. We'll start off with Shift, right mouse click, and then create a polygon cylinder. I'm going to use the default uh, amount of divisions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the top cap and bottom faces. So you can go to face selection, press 4 to go to wireframe, and then drag over the top and bottom faces like that. Then just go and press delete to delete it. You want to end up with a loop looking like this. Next, you select all the faces and you extrude them. So shift, right mouse click and extrude the face. Pull the blue arrow to create the shape. Now, uh, those of you who are aware, you can actually create the exact same shape using the pipe as well. Okay, So you can skip the uh, earlier processes. So now I got this shape. How do I convert this into a tire? Again, you select the 
outer face ring. Okay, so you click on one of the face, go to the adjacent face, hold down shift, double click. The faces are now selected. Extrude the face. Okay, pull out using the blue arrow, pull out a small section, then press R to go to global scale and scale it in slightly. Repeat the process, press G to repeat last command. Okay, and pull out slightly. Okay, and then press R to go to scale and scale it inwards. So now you have your very basic looking tire. If you want the rim of the tire to be smaller, you just need to select the internal face loop holding down the control and grabbing the Y scale axis, and then you can scale it up non-uniformly in only the X and Z axis. Next, while these are still being selected, you can delete them away because later you're going to replace the center with the wheel hub. So you don't really need the internal faces here. So we have our tire, and if you press number three, it looks pretty decent. And the amount of faces is still relatively low and you can edit it quite easily. So now, how do we get the texture to form onto this surface? So first, I'm going to scale this up slightly first. I'm just going to go to vertex mode, grab all the vertices and scale it. I tend to like to scale like this compared to uh, in object mode because I will not mess up the original scale. Okay, so now I got the scale that I want. If you open up your UV texture editor, you will notice that it already has its own uh, UVs, but this UV is wrong because this was a UV that is remaining from its origin, original cylindrical shape. So what is the basic shape of this shape here? I mean, this uh, tire. Okay, what type of mapping is the most suitable for it? Anyone? What can you use? Anyone just shout out the answer. I'll pull up the menu. You have these three available here. Okay. Under UV, you can see cylindrical, planar, and spherical. Which one do you think is suitable? Anyone? Bill? Which one do you think is suitable? What shape is the tire? Hmm? Cylindrical, cylindrical, right? Because the original shape is a cylinder. So go ahead and apply a cylindrical UV map. But if you apply a cylindrical UV projection, you notice the uh, cylindrical map placement just only covers about halfway. All right. You can actually grab these, this placement manipulator just grab the handle and you can pull it all the way until it touches both ends. And you notice now the entire tire fills up the entire UV space. Okay, so once you're done with it, you can click away and the entire UV space is being used. However, if you open up this button here, okay, this is a button that you will use a lot when you're doing UV layout. This one will check how much UV space is distributed on your tire and you know that we by doing that you can see we have some issues here already notice that the goal here is to scale or reshape the uv layout until all the squares on the 3d view itself looks the same okay so we start by selecting the shell of the tire and then we're going to press r to scale and we're going to scale it until we see the size of the squares are mapped evenly on the tire. So right now, if I scale at this axis, it doesn't do anything. Okay, but over here, now you can see the size of the squares are being spread out. Okay, what you want to do is you want to manipulate the scaling until the squares are evenly spaced out. Now we have some stretching going on here. So we have to fix the sides here. And now you can see the orientation of the, sh the shell is horizontal. So I'm going to use the rotation tool here to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, And we're going to select the sides, the side edges here that form the faces. 
So I'm going to go to edge, double click and select the edge. Okay, I want to make sure I do not want to select these two edges here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect. I'm going to start from this edge. Shift, double click to select this edge. Then shift, select this again. And shift, double click. So the two edges, okay, the two edges are selected. So turning on the checker box pattern again, I'm going to scale them upwards until the square pattern is evenly spaced. So when you get a square pattern spaced out, the checker box spaced out like this, now you've got a very good distribution of the pattern. And now your basically your tire is nicely laid out. I mean, the UV is nicely laid out. So what it needs right now is a texture material. So we're going to assign this tire with the same material we have over here. So right mouse click, assign existing material, and then we're going to assign the original blend material. Okay, when we assign it, you notice we can't see it because our checker button is still on. So just click on it to uncheck. And then you can see we have the patterns appearing on the wheel. However, you can see the scale is a bit off. Okay, we can easily change this. Okay, now that we have this shell nicely laid out, we do not want to distort the shape anymore. And remember, in when you're doing texturing, right, all these image patterns are actually repeated all over the place. That means this image is being tiled. So if you want the texture to fill into your tire nicely, you have to scale you have to scale it uniformly okay until it matches the width of the tire okay right now i'm already encroaching into the other pattern so you can see it start to spread out so if you want you can maybe uh, scale it in outwards a little bit okay until it avoids the other pattern so I'm going to move this right in the center and then I'm going to use my scale and try to scale it as much as I can. And now you have the higher threads on the wheel. And if you want to change the color, just go to material attributes. And go ahead and change the color to something that matches the tire. All right, and then this is the simple way to create the tire. All right, so now you have the tire. Okay, now all you need to do is rotate it, duplicate it four times, and position it accordingly. And you can adjust the materials until it's matched. But take note, this is the problem of using this type of tire. If you zoom in too closely, you can see all these uh, compression artifacts that was left over from the original JPEG image. Okay. Now, how do you adjust the bump? Now that we created this, let's say you want to adjust uh, how high or low the bump works. You go to Material Attributes. Okay, and then, then you go to Bump. You click on the Bump Mapping. Okay, and then you click on either these buttons. Okay, I need to go back to... Sometimes if you cannot access the bump, mapping within uh, the attribute editor. Okay, you have to open up the hypershade. And under the graph editor, you can actually click on the, the bump amount. Okay, let me just organize this a bit. Okay, if you click on the bump, and then you can see the bump value here. You can adjust the bump value when, whether you want it to be deeper or higher. But notice that if you apply too much, right, you really distort the bump. Okay? So we can play with the bump value here. You want to bump inwards or you want to bump outwards? Okay, that is up to you. Okay? So this is the simplest way to create a bump texture. And if you want to have text on it, all you need to do is to type some black text in, uh, in Photoshop. Okay? So now I'm going to show you Another way to model the tire, but this time you actually model the physical tire. So I'm going to create one image reference first.
and assign a material to it. Assign a surface shader. And I'm going to use the original uh, image as a reference. Okay, So I'm going to use this one, but this time I'm going to physically model, use this as a reference to model. I'm going to put this in its own layer and lock it. And I'm just going to create one segment. Okay, so I'm going to create probably a, a poly, polygon plane again. Okay, so I just want to create um, one of these segments first. So I'll go to vertex mode and I'm going to scale this out until it matches the width of the tire. Okay, I'm going to use insert edge loop. Okay, I don't know. Okay, wait. let's go to edge loop. Shift right mouse click, insert the edge loop. Okay, insert one edge loop here, one edge loop here. One edge loop here, one edge loop here. Maybe one in the center here because I'm going to use, I'm going to get rid of half of this because the other side looks exactly the same. So now I need another edge loop here. Okay, insert one more edge loop here. Just want to make sure I have enough edge loops to create the shapes. Two edge loops here and two edge loops here. So now I'm going to switch over to X-Ray just to help me a little bit to see why it's below. Go to selection and I'm going to start to move the vertices up and down until it matches the pattern. Okay, double click to select this edge loop, move this up. Okay, I'm gonna select these group of uh, faces and I'm gonna delete them. These group of faces, I'm gonna select and delete them. Okay, I'm gonna insert one more edge loop here. Okay, insert one more edge loop here and here right now continue to delete away the faces okay i'm going to delete the faces that are formed over the white areas and then delete okay so now i have my first tire tread pattern okay so now how do i duplicate okay how do i duplicate to the other side first i need to edit duplicate special Minus one in the x axis and duplicate special. I'm going to join both of these together, mesh combine. Okay. So now I need to duplicate another set, shift B, duplicate another set, and then move them downwards here until it matches the other pattern like that. I'm just going to modify and center the pivot. Makes it easier for me to align. Okay, and then I'm going to combine these two together. Mesh, uh, combine, and I'm going to stitch these together. If right mouse click, merge vertices, merge vertices. Okay, I'm going to try here, uh, edit mesh and then merge. 
Okay, the threshold, maybe I need to push it a little bit higher. Okay, press G. Okay, press G to repeat last command. Okay, I'm just gonna merge. Okay, so the reason is very simple. I need to select these faces that form the trade pattern, and then I want to extrude them. Okay, maybe this one. Okay, not this one. Okay, then I'm going to extrude a small pattern upwards in the global axis, just a tiny bit. Then I'm going to take a look at this one. This At this moment here, the faces at the bottom, I don't think I need them. Okay, I already have my red pattern coming out already. Okay, I will need to, let's see, get rid of perhaps from these faces onwards. Okay, I don't need these faces. Basically, I just want to create a gap so that when I join the two parts together, top and bottom, right, they're going to create another extra gap. So now I have these two pieces and I'm going to modify and center the pivot again. So basically, we have one tire thread element now that is modeled. We want to create multiple pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use edit Duplicate special, but this time I'm going to reset the duplicate special settings. We're going to create an instance again. However, we're just going to straight away duplicate an instance. You can duplicate a copy as well. And then I'm going to move the duplicate until it is lined up with the one on the bottom here. And I want to take note at the channel, channel box here to see how much it translates. So it translates at one point. Three, four, four. So select the piece, edit duplicate special, translate in the Z axis 1.344, and then maybe on a duplicate 20. Or let's just give it a high number like 30 pieces and duplicate special. And now you can see the entire thread, the model thread is all built. But take note that these are still separate items. So now I want to deform them and bend them to form the tire wheels. Okay. If you line them up nicely, you should be able to merge them together. But I think the, the movement is slightly off. Okay. I think it's still overlapping slightly. Okay. But we're going to ignore that. We're going to select all of this and then we're going to mesh combine first. Combine all the meshes together so they become a single piece. Okay, so now they have become a single piece. So how do we so-called so bend them or wrap them to form the tire uh, piece here? And I think I made a mistake here. When I extrude, I should have extruded it without deleting away the faces. I just need to create a pattern and extrude because right now you can see the holes uh, through them. So in order to fix that, Either I have to create another cylinder and then just wrap around the cylinder. But if you if you want to skip the cylinder process, um, then perhaps uh, I should not have deleted away the faces. And I'll just select the face and extrude them. But anyway, the next thing is you just apply a deform and then apply a non-linear deform and then apply a bend. Now, when you see a bend, you can see the bend manipulator here. You can actually grab and select the bend. 
select the band and then you can actually rotate it until it matches the orientation of your tire okay gonna rotate it 90 degrees and then if you click on the inputs of the band and you choose the curvature highlight the text curvature and middle mouse click drag left and right you notice that now i can bend the wheel i'm going to bend it all the way to 180 degrees however it is not bending at the correct axis so not a problem you just select the band manipulator and then just rotate it at another axis so i'm going to rotate it down another 90 degrees in the z axis in this case and now i have the physical tire thread okay so how do you use this because right now if i select this tire and i start to move it around the tire will go haywire all sorts of places because it is linked to the deforming uh, uh operation so in order to get out of this deform let's say you're happy with this i'm happy with this shape i want it to be permanent Okay, there's still a gap there all right tiny gap there but um, anyway let's say you're happy with this you want to uh, manipulate it without it being affected by this band you go ahead and go to edit delete all by type and you choose history if you kill the history now this thing is permanently bent but of course remember to apply another center pivot so that you can start to manipulate it you can rescale it Okay, and then you can use the scale tool to make it narrower. But at least this is a real tire thread. This is not a bump and fake thread. But take note, when I modeled this tire thread, I did not use any subdivision. So if you press number three to subdivide it, it's going to look like a mess. Okay, like this. No, doesn't look very nice. And if you really want to subdivide it, you really have to insert a lot of edge loop to create the hard corners. And I think uh, for your assignment, as long as the, the details are there, I think it's fine. You don't have to insert too much edge loop. Otherwise, you'll become very, very heavy, right? When you're dealing with a lot of edge loops. So essentially, this is how you create a couple of methods in creating the tires. You can use the first method, which I showed you, or you can use this method, right? So both of which requires uh, you to uh, use different operations. For this one, you must lay out your uv properly and for this one you need to model the patterns and have them link up properly before you uh, duplicate all of them and ideally have all the elements uh, stitched and merged together all right okay so that's the streaming video for the day i'll stop the stream now